The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the cure. Of the... the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, the nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Confounded, Carew. Look at these x-rays. Look at them. Her arm has been perfectly set. She's 15 years old. Why, she doesn't even need a doctor. Then by all means, Dr. Gillespie, use your own judgment. A simple fracture of the arm, and I'm supposed to take personal charge of the case. There isn't any case. She doesn't even need an intern. Nurse could look after her. I am not trying to coerce you. You may do exactly as you please about it. Carew, this woman now, the girl's mother, Mrs. Babcock, is she another friend of yours? I've never even seen the woman. Hmm. Her request was referred to me merely as a matter of routine, and I I will not be drawn into another of these discussions. Yeah. Good morning, Dr. Gillespie. Good morning. Come in, Kildare. Come on, come on in. You may be interested to know that after 30 years of medical achievement, I have just been reduced to diagnosing broken arms. Really? Now, Dr. Gillespie... Furthermore, this particular broken arm has already been treated, set, and cut. Please. I'll not stay here and listen to any more of this. You know very well I said to do as you please. And, Carew, I shall... Good day. Yeah. That blue-blooded moron. Dollar-chasing pipsqueak. Yes, I'm a little surprised he isn't in the lounge, rolling out the carpet and fluffing up his gardenia for Mrs. Babcock. Yeah. Apparently, he doesn't know who she is. Well, beyond the fact that she has a daughter with a broken arm, neither do I. What? You've never bathed in a Babcock bathtub? I am unclean, Jimmy. Does this woman sell bathtubs? <laughs> No, but her late husband made about ten million bucks manufacturing them. Interested? I am not. She was also a well-known uh, specialty dancer before she married. Oh, dancer, huh? Mm-hmm. She attracted particular attention at the Paris Exposition with huh? her unique rendition of the Can Can. Well, now, <laughs> you don't say. You know, I think you ought to take the case. Well, now, well, that might be a good idea, then, mm-hmm. uh, to see that the child's arm heals properly. Mm-hmm. Then you'll do it? Well, yeah. Yes, I will, Jimmy. I will. Parker? Yes, Dr. Gillespie. Parker, there's a Mrs. Babcock down in the lounge has a daughter with a broken arm. Tell her I'll take the case. A simple fracture? Yes, a simple fracture. Well, all right. Uh, I'll go with you, Parker. Mm. Oh, by the way, there is one thing. That uh, Paris Exposition was in 1921. See you later. 1921? Like this. Oh, Kildare. I've been taken in. (laughs) 
And so, of course, just as soon as they informed me what had happened, I rushed right over to the Long Island and, and had Priscilla taken out of that horrible little emergency hospital and brought here. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Well, now after we... all, Blair Hospital is the best, and you're the yes. best too, Dr. Gillespie. Uh, and I can't see any reason why Priscilla shouldn't have the best always. Uh, I mean, uh, since I do have the money, of course, but although mm. <laughs> I guess it's supposed to be vulgar to talk about money. Not at all, Mrs. Babcock. Not at all. You talk all about money you want. Now, uh, Dr. Kildare, he'll be glad to... That's why I chose the Devereaux Institute for Young Ladies out on Long Island. Huh. Priscilla's been there at boarding school, you know. I mean the Devereaux Institute is positively the best. Yeah. I mean, certain of that. Yeah. Oh, they're so snooty about family backgrounds. Well, I had a yeah. terrible time... Well, that is, it, it took time, of course. But I think it's so important to be right with the right people, don't you? <laughs> no. I mean, after all, it... Uh, what did you say? I said no. Oh, <laughs> oh what a delightful sense of humor. Uh, thank you. <laughs> well, I do have to run now. Oh, I'm so glad Priscilla's in such good hands. <laughs> and you know something, Dr. Gillespie. I just adore you. Uh, <laughs> Goodbye, gents. Uh, gentlemen. <laughs> Killed it. Words? Fail me. Oh, well, now she isn't your patient. Mm -hmm. Maybe the daughter's not quite so talkative. I don't care. I don't want any part of either one of them. Oh, you can't throw over the case before you've even seen the girl. I don't want to see her. I... Jimmy, how come you're so interested in this? Mm -hmm. Because of one fact that hasn't been mentioned. Huh? The way the girl broke her arm. Well, horseback riding, I suppose. Some select sport at that select finishing school. Not quite, no. It happened when she fell off a rope ladder that she'd rigged up in order to escape from that select finishing school. Good morning, Priscilla. Uh, I'm Dr. Gillespie. How do you do, sir? Uh, you might call this merely a gut acquainted visit today, young lady. Uh, since I'm responsible for that arm of yours... I thought that possibly... There is no the... reason to be concerned about my arm. Considering my age, general tone of health, and rate of metabolism, the bones should knit quickly and without any trouble at all. Hmm. You seem rather well informed on the subject. I'm rather well informed on most subjects, Doctor. Oh. And especially well on scientific subjects. Oh, oh, I see. Then I take it you regard yourself as a scientist. In an embryo stage, yes. Advanced, however, some 10 to 12 years beyond my actual age. Which I, I recall is 15. Correct. That, of course, I'm unable to change. But no, no, no. No doubt you would if you could. <laughs> Any particular field of science in which you specialize? My most intense interest is directed toward the realm of astronomy and astrophysics. Well, that's quite a good-sized realm. I presume the subject of medicine has also engaged your attention at one time or another. Only superficially. Huh. After all, it is merely a byproduct of true science. Yeah, yeah, just a byproduct. Yeah. I say this quite impersonally, Doctor, but medicine simply does not have enough scope to challenge my intellectual curiosity. Miss Babcock, I no longer have the least doubt that what your arm will heal precisely on schedule. It wouldn't dare not to. No, I can't entirely agree with you, Dr. Gillespie. I don't believe it's natural meanness on her part at all. I think for some reason she's putting up a front. And I agree with you, Dr. Kildare. I know when I was a young girl, I certainly... Parker, some... shut up. Well... You were never a young girl. You were born at the age of 47. Oh! Well, I think the child's been hurt by something. Hurt? Been badly hurt. <laughs> Jimmy, it would be easier to hurt the Rock of Gibraltar with a pea shooter. <laughs> I know she's cold and hard, but that's it. An attitude like that doesn't develop naturally at 15. It builds up as a result of some deep emotional pain. It's a symptom. Also, she was trying to run away from school. Why? Probably because she was planning to poison the city reservoir. Mm, that girl has a serious problem. The girl is a serious problem. So is her mother. Oh, she just needs love and sympathy, like every young girl. Well, who don't? Uh, she also needs understanding, and she needs help. Well, she needs a good spanking, that's what she needs, and I'll have nothing more to do with the case. Then you won't mind if I have a try at it. Mind? 
Why, I should be delighted if you would, Dr. Sigmund von Kildare. Enough mathematical background to follow all phases of the theory, but the general development seems to be entirely logical. Priscilla, you've spent a lot of time on this, haven't you? Yes. It's the only thing in life that interests me, Dr. Kildare. I see. And what about, uh, well, the human relations? People are unimportant to me. I have no need for human relations, as you call it. And you never get lonely? Certainly not. Hmm. Tell me something, Priscilla. Isn't truth the one great ideal of all science. Yes, truth above everything else. Then why do you go on deliberately lying to me? What? For the last half hour, you've told me one lie right after another. Why, I... What about this shining ideal of truth? Do you really believe it? Or is that another lie? What? And if you do believe it, why don't you stick to it instead of lying to me every time you draw a breath? And what, what? about this scientific talk? Just a pose to impress somebody? What are you? A fake? A phony? <laughs> better. Now, I'm sorry, Priscilla, but it was the only way to break you down and find out what's wrong. Now, please understand this. I'm for you, and I want to help you. Now, let's talk about it. Come on. They hate me, Dr. Kildare. All of them at school hate me. I don't have a friend. Not even one single friend in the whole world. Yes, I understand. They stick together because their grandfathers all knew one another. And you're left on the outside, right? They laugh at me. Make fun of me because I know things. Because I want to know things. I won't go back there. I won't. There now, there now, honey. We've got a lot more talking to do yet. And then we'll try to find a solution. But right now, just realize this. You do have a friend. That is, if you want me for a friend. All right, Jimmy. All right. All right, now. Uh, the thing to do is to get her out of that school. She doesn't belong there. But that may be quite a problem. Yes, I know. I ran into Mrs. Babcock in the hall this afternoon. Tried to sound her out on the subject a little, but... Oh, she's well-meaning enough. Yeah, but she happens to be an income poop. Well, now, that's a little uncharitable of you, Doctor. She spoke quite highly of you. Oh, quite highly, did she, though? In fact, I can sense a strong interest beginning to develop there. I think her intentions are serious. Confounded, Jimmy. That woman is a menace. <laughs> Why, she ought to be locked up. Y you can't argue with a woman. If she ever got her hooks on a man, he wouldn't have a chance. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Now, what's all this? Oh, hello, uh, Dr. Carew. Oh, why, we were just discussing Dr. Gillespie's uh, conquest of Mrs. Babcock. A conquest? Indeed. Why, Dr. Gillespie, you dog, you. Carew! Now, 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 now. Just a little pleasantry of mine, you know. <laughs> uh, I really should meet this charming lady. Yes, you certainly ought to. Serve you both right. Oh, dear, dear. You are in a state. <sighs> I think you'll be all right as soon as he gets used to it, Dr. Carew. After all, this romance did develop rather unexpectedly, you know. Romance? Kildare? If you want an unexpected romance, I'll give you one. Here. Yeah. Listen to this poem that Parker found in Priscilla's room this afternoon. Mm -hmm. You want to hear it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It goes, The eyes of my love gleam like the pole star, and the tones of his voice sound in harmonies cyclical. Mm -hmm. The brow of my love is a theorem from Euclid, and his glance makes my pulse beat ultrasonical. Free verse, I suppose you'd call it. Free as the air, that word. Mm -hmm. Scientific surrealism. I'd like to get a look at that boy. Yeah, and then go find a mirror, Jimmy, because she's dedicated the poem to Dr. James Kildare. We will return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment.
continue with the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. I think it's just simply amazing, Dr. Kildare, the way that girl has changed since she came here. And in just four days, too. Yes, there's a big difference, all right, Parker. She's trying so hard to learn how to be friendly that it's... Well, it's just pitiful. <laughs> the worst of it is, in just a few days, you'll have to go right back and face that same misery. Oh, Dr. Kildare, can't anything be done? I know the one thing that should be done, but I don't know how it can be done. She should be taken out of that finishing school immediately. Priscilla Babcock? Yes. Uh, of course she should. You had no business being sent there in the first place. Well, all right, Dr. Gillespie. How about a practical suggestion? What can we do about it? Nothing. She belongs in some science preparatory institute. The Rodman Academy, for example. Yes. Yes, Rodman's would be perfect. Yes. She'd get individual guidance, and she'd find the emotional outlet that she needs so badly. Hmm. But I thought she'd found that in you. <sighs> oh, wait a minute. That's a passing phase. Doesn't mean a thing. Uh, yeah. I hope. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Dr. Gillespie, there might be one possible way to get Mrs. Babcock to change her mind. Oh, indeed. Well, well, if she were advised to change her daughter's school by someone who was in position to, uh, well, play on her affections, then she might do it. Yes, yes, there's always a possibility in getting someone to change the... Kildare, I won't do it. I'll have nothing more to do with that woman. I positively and absolutely will not do it. And that's final. (laughs) Mrs. Babcock, I asked you to come here this afternoon because certain uh, considerations make it advisable that we discuss a subject of some importance to both of us. Oh, I understand perfectly, Dr. Gillespie. Yes. Oh, or I suppose I should call you Leonard now, don't you think? <laughs> oh, I just knew you would. Yes. <laughs> well, now, to get down to the specific details You have such of a the... noble forehead. You do come from one of the old families, of course. Mrs. Babcock, I do not come from any family. I was left as a foundling on the doorstep of Blair Hospital 95 years ago. Oh. I completed my internship at the age of seven, and I've been practicing medicine here ever since. Oh, that sense of humor of yours just slays. I mean, fascinating. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> and now, if I might, for only five minutes, discuss the rather important subject of Priscilla's future... Perhaps we may be able to... Oh, you're absolutely right, of course. It is best to take care of the more practical questions first. And what could be more practical than our daughter's future? What? After all, we have our whole lifetime for each other. (laughs) You mean you thought that... uh... You idiot. Oh, say it again, Leonard. Oh, I just love to be dominated by a man. Mrs. <laughs> Babcock, may I ask what gave you uh, the... Don't ask me. Tell me, big boy. <laughs> big boy. Parker! Parker! Good gracious, Dr. Gillespie. What's the matter? Parker, go find Kildare and get him in here. What? Oh, we don't really need Dr. Kildare, do we, honey? Parker, Parker, for the love of heaven, go find Kildare. <laughs> All right, Dr. Gillespie, it's all right. Just relax. She's gone now. You're safe. You've got nothing to worry about. Ah, Kildare, she's a maniac. That woman's a raving maniac. Yeah, I don't know how you do it. You insult them and still they go wild. Uh, I'll have to learn that technique myself. Technique? I didn't do one single thing. Well, I don't know. You must have led her on some way. Led her on. Jimmy, the whole thing was your fault in the first place. Now, you know that. You talked me into it against my better judgment. I should have known better. Well, that's that. It didn't work. Frankly, I don't know anything that will. No, I don't either, Jimmy. The only thing that impresses her is what she calls old families. <laughs> it's a shame that Mr. Miles Standish isn't still around. Or oh, oh, John Alder. Hey, now you know that might be it. I'm afraid not. They're both dead. No, but what about Carew? Carew? Sure, that blue blood Boston background he's always talking about. Jimmy, he'll never do it. I've got three magic words that say he will. Magic words? Yes. Ten million dollars. Ten million dollars? Dr. Kildare, 
I'm not certain I heard you correctly. Did you say ten million dollars? That's right, Dr. Carew. Ten million dollars. Walking around loose. Right in this very hospital. And I didn't know about it. Yes, it's amazing. And uh, do I understand that this uh, potential patroness wishes to meet me? Dr. Carew, if you'll pardon the colloquialism, she's down in my office right now, frothing at the bit. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Then you think the best approach toward getting a contribution... <clears throat> toward advancing the interests of Blair Hospital will be to urge Mrs. Babcock to put her daughter in the... Uh, the... the Rodman Academy. Uh, I think it's the only way, Dr. Carew. The girl's extremely unhappy at present and in danger of becoming a mental problem. Now, if we can prevent that, if we can help her, Mrs. Babcock's gratitude may very well be, be boundless. Oh, dear me. Boundless, you think? Well, after all, she's an ex-chorus girl, and as you know, show people are noted for their generosity. Yes, well, that's sometimes overrated, I think. My wife, you understand, was a former burlesque... Uh, a dancer. Uh, uh, yes, I know. Dr. Kildare, I'll do it. I am sincerely convinced that it's for the best interest of, of... Of the patient? Of the patient? Oh, yes, of course, the patient. Uh, shall we join Mrs. Babcock? Mrs. Babcock, I, I don't believe you've met our director, Dr. Carew. How do you do, my dear? The charmed, I'm sure. Did you say Mrs. Babcock? Am I to understand that this lovely young girl is married? Oh, Dr. Carew. <laughs> Mrs. Babcock is, most unfortunately, a widow, Dr. Carew. How tragic. Yes, yes, isn't it? Her late husband was Worthington Babcock of Connecticut. Perhaps you may have... Oh, uh... yes, there were some Babcocks with whom members of my <coughs> family corresponded so far back as the revolutionary days. Uh, uh, Dr. Carew, are you by any chance from a very old family? My dear, the Carew family is probably older than any other in Boston. Oh, it must be just wonderful. Well, that sort of thing does carry its responsibilities, you know. Why, well, I suppose you've been intimate friends with the Babbitts for generations. The uh, Babbitts? Of course, Dr. Carew. The Babbitts in Boston. Why, well, I've heard you mention them often. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Uh, Dr. Carew, now, about the matter you mentioned. Oh, yes, that. <clears throat> uh, Mrs. Babcock, I have been discussing your daughter with Dr. Kildare. That school she's attending simply won't do. It won't do at all. Well, uh, uh, what school would you suggest? An immediate transfer to the... Uh, 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 Rodman Academy? Yes, Rodman. It's positively the best. Oh, I'll do it this afternoon. Oh, you're so right, Dr. Carew. It, it is hard for a woman alone with money that has to be managed and all sorts of problems. Oh, yes, yes. Mrs. Babcock, I would like to talk with you concerning a subject which is very near to my heart. I think we might leave Dr. Kildare now and stroll about the hospital. Why, Dr. Carew, <laughs> this is a surprise, but not an unpleasant one. Oh, my dear, when you understand my desperate need Oh, I a... do understand it. Well, we are getting on rapidly. Come now, Mrs. Babcock, I'd like to show you some of my problems. Oh, of course. <laughs> uh, goodbye, Dr. Kildare, and, and thank you. Oh, not at all, Mrs. Babcock. All right, Dr. Gillespie, she's gone. You can come out now. Yeah, confounded, Jimmy. I hope she stays gone. <laughs> oh, she will. She's got a real blue blood in tow now. She's got a phony stuffed shirt in tow now. <laughs> you know, Jimmy, neither one of them realizes what the other one's talking about. Yeah, so wait till they find out. And wait till Mrs. Carew finds out. Ooh. <laughs> she's an ex-show girl, too, you know. And Dr. Gillespie... What happens then shouldn't happen even to a, to a babbler of Boston. <laughs> In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare.
And now, once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Oh, I'm so happy, Dr. Kildare, Dr. Gillespie. I don't know how you ever got Mother to do it, but you did, and that's the important thing. Yes, well, it was a little complicated, Priscilla. I'm supposed to register at the Academy on Monday and start Tuesday, and I can hardly wait. Uh, the, um, the Rodmans came in to see me yesterday, you know. Oh, yes, we talked to them. Their, uh, their son Dave was with them. I know. Dr. Gillespie and I met him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, Dave Rodman, he seemed to be a very nice lad. Uh, he goes to the Academy, too. Huh? He's, uh, <clears throat> 16. Oh, mm. really? Mm. Well, I, uh, I guess I'd better go pack. I'll see you again before I leave. All right, Priscilla. Jimmy. Hmm? Does she still think she's in love with you? Oh, hardly. Did you hear those remarks about young Rodman? Well, yes. Uh, but after all, he's 16 and you are an older man. All right. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Dr. Gillespie, Dr. Kildare, do you know what's happened? Why, no, Dr. Guru. What's happened? That woman. That woman. Oh, yes, yes, that woman. Why, I was only... If my wife ever found out that that woman actually thought that I was... That I was trying to make a conquest. A conquest, indeed. Why, Dr. Carew, you dog, you. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Ted Osborne, Sarah Selby, and Patty Chapman. Dick Joy speaking. <laughs>